Today I'm going to be looking at the SaneSmart Genmitsu Prover XL 4030 CNC router. Now I reviewed the 4030's smaller sibling, the Prover 3018, over a year ago, and I'll leave a link to that video in case you're curious. Now in the interest of full disclosure, SaneSmart did send me this machine to review, but they're not paying me for this review and have no input on what I say about the machine. The 4030 came packaged in a large box with all the parts pretty well padded for the most part. More about the packaging later in the video. Now SaneSmart markets this as an easy to set up machine and honestly that is a real stretch. The Prover XL took me almost five hours to assemble and required a lot of patience to set up. This isn't a plug and play machine. Be prepared to invest the time to get it running. The manual isn't all that well written and misstates certain details or doesn't provide enough clarity on others. The most glaring example was the part that describes the wiring of the spindle. The manual states that there is no specific polarity for wiring the spindle motor, and yet the connectors on the spindle and the wiring looms are color coded to assure proper connection. This isn't a deal breaker, but just something SaneSmart needs to work to improve. A few more pointers when assembling the machine. When attaching the x-axis drag chain to the frame, be very patient and careful when threading in the two screws, as there's very little space to work with. You don't want to end up damaging the threads by cross-threading the screws. Again, another design issue SaneSmart can work on. Also, the wiring from the x-axis limit switches interferes with the screws that attach the mounting plate to the frame. I found that to be pretty sloppy design work and should just get fixed. There's no excuse for this. Another thing to consider when assembling the machine is the table or surface it will sit on. I recommend a table that's at least 48 inches wide by 24 inches deep. This will give you enough space to accommodate the machine and control unit. You also want to make sure the table is extremely sturdy and can handle the vibration when the machine is working. I'll leave a few table options in the description below the video in case you need a sturdy table. Once the machine is assembled, you'll notice that the 4030 is a much larger and more substantial machine than its smaller sibling. The machine itself without the control box measures in at about 30 inches wide by 25 inches deep by about 22 inches tall. Both sides of the frame are made from hefty C-channel aluminum extrusions. The gantry is also made from the same C-channel extrusion. All the other parts on the machine are laser cut or machined from aluminum and there isn't a single flimsy plastic part on the structure of the machine. What is even more impressive is that all three axes are driven by lead screws, which is a feature usually found on much more expensive machines. The lead screws are driven by hefty NEMA 23 stepper motors, and the Y-axis has two stepper motors to move the entire gantry assembly. Again, this is a feature usually found on much more expensive machines. The machine has a maximum work envelope of 400 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 110 millimeters on the Z-axis. The X and Y-axis of the work envelope can be expanded Expanded through an expansion kit that SaneSmart sells to either 600 by 600 millimeters or 1000 by 1000 millimeters in size. For some odd reason, they still don't have the 1000 millimeter extension kit available for sale. I'll leave a link to the 600 millimeter kit below in case you're interested. The stock MDF spoil board that comes with the machine is a bit larger than the work envelope. This ensures that you can use the full 400 by 300 millimeter work envelope. I also like that the limit switches are positioned right outside the work envelope so it allows you to again utilize the full work envelope. The stock MDF spoil board has threaded inserts for work holding. SaneSmart also provides four work holding clamps. The clamps do a decent job but I wish the threaded inserts were spaced a bit closer to each other so as to give you a bit more flexibility when clamping down stock. You can however upgrade to the T-slot aluminum spoil board which gives you much more flexibility flexibility and access to other work holding options like their machining vise. I'll leave links to the T-slot upgrade and the vise below. The 4030 work envelope on the machine is actually pretty decent and allows you to machine things like a full 12 inch by 12 inch piece of wood or acrylic without any resizing. The stock spindle is a 300 watt 24 volt unit that frankly works well for most applications as you'll see in a few minutes. However, SaneSmart does provide an additional aluminum mount with with the base kit so you can replace the stock spindle with a DeWalt DWP611. The DWP611 gives you more than three times as much power and I highly recommend the upgrade if you plan to cut metals, hardwoods or if you plan 
plan to use your router very regularly. The only downside to using the DeWalt spindle is that you will have to make sure to turn the router on and off manually. It's still a worthwhile upgrade because it gives you much more cutting power and allows you to use quarter inch bits. The stock spindle collet is an ER11, which can only handle bits as large as one eighth of an inch in diameter. I'll leave a link to the DeWalt router upgrade below. Another odd thing about the stock spindle is that Saint Smart does not provide a dust boot with the kit, and strangely enough, nor do they even sell one for it. The only dust boot they sell is the one for the DeWalt router. It's almost like they assume most people will chuck the stock spindle and upgrade to the DeWalt in any case. Or they somehow believe the stock spindle magically sucks up all the dust. Not sure which one it is. However, there are a few third-party options out there. Not sure how well they work though. The 4030's control electronics are all neatly packaged in this enclosure that houses its power supply and control board. It has an e-stop and buttons to reset, pause, and resume the program on the top face. It also has a manual speed control knob for the spindle right next to these buttons. There's a USB port on the side to connect the unit to your computer, and there is an optional offline controller available that can be plugged into this unit and allows you to jog the machine and run code without a computer. It is useful when jogging the machine to zero the X and Y axes, but I do prefer to run the G-code directly from a computer instead. The control unit also allows you to connect an optional laser engraving module to it. I'll leave a link to that below in case you're looking to get one. So once you have the machine assembled, you can connect it to a computer using the provided USB cable. I recommend downloading the latest version of the Candle CNC software. I'll leave a download link below. This will be the primary interface between your computer and the machine. The software works very well and allows you to jog the machine, zero axes, and send G-code to the machine. And since we're on the subject of jogging the machine, the manufacturer recommends lubricating the lead screws regularly with PTFE dry lube. I used some spray PTFE dry lube and sprayed down the lead screws on all three axes. Remember to spray both the Y axis lead screws. I then jogged the axes back and forth a couple of times to spread the lubricant evenly. I'll leave the link to the lube I recommend right below the video. Another very useful feature of the machine is the included Z probe. This allows you to zero the Z axis of the machine before each cut. I cannot stress how useful this is. It really saves you a ton of time when setting up a piece of stock and also makes the cut much more precise than zeroing the z-axis using a piece of paper. The big question though is how does it perform? Now I wanted to test it with the stock spindle in its stock 4030 size. So the first program I ran was the sample engraving g-code that comes in the USB drive which is included with the machine. There are two sets of bits provided with the machine. The first is a set of v-carve engraving bits and the other is a set of end mills. For this first cut, I used a V-carve bit. I set up the piece of MDF that was provided with the machine on the spoil board and secured it with the clamps. I first zeroed the X and Y axes using candle. I then connected the Z-probe to the bit and ran the Z-probe routine from candle to zero the Z-axis. I then opened the G-code in candle and ran it. And as you can see, it performed pretty well. The text and shapes were very precisely and clearly engraved. Next, I wanted to mill slightly deeper into wood and see how it would perform. For this, I decided to use a pine plug. I'll leave a link to these plugs below in case you want to try something like this. To create the G-code, I used Easel from Inventables. This is a free piece of software which I can't recommend enough. It's a very simple yet powerful program for beginners. It allows you to convert a basic image into an engravable 2D design and allows you to lay it out on your material, see how it would look, and then export the G-code required for the color which is what I did in this case. For this cut though, I'm going to use these 1 16th inch Speed Tiger carbide end mills, which I absolutely love. They're much better than the cheap end mills that come with the machine. These are well worth the investment and will save you time and money in the long run. You can find links to these below. For work holding, I'm going to use a commonly used technique. I'm going to put a few pieces of painter's tape on the back of the plug and then lay a few pieces of painter's tape on the spoil board. And then I'm going to put some super glue on the pieces of painter's tape on the spoil board and then place the plug on top of the spoil board and press down till the glue bonds. This keeps flat pieces securely locked down to the spoil board. It also prevents your spindle from running into clamps or other mounting devices during the cut. I then downloaded the G-code, zeroed all the axes, and ran the program. And as you can see, the machine performed really well. It had no issues.
through zipping through the pine and produced very clean cuts. The only thing I missed having was a dust port for my vacuum. I had to hang around with my shop vac and keep the piece clean as it cut. And as you can see, the final result was very impressive and clean. It needs very little sanding or cleanup. I then decided to mill an engineered panel from acrylic to test the precision of the machine. I had created this part design in Fusion 360, so I exported the DXF file, imported it into Easel, and then generated the G-code. I'm going to use the same Speed Tiger 1 16th inch bit for this cut. Since I'm going to be cutting all the way through the piece, I'll be using another piece of MDF underneath the acrylic. So so I don't mess up the surface of the spoil board. I'm going to place a few strips of painter's tape on the bottom of the piece of acrylic and then place a few strips of tape on the MDF and then use super glue to glue the two pieces together. I'm going to then repeat this process to attach the MDF acrylic combo to the spoil board. I then zeroed the X, Y and Z axes, imported the G code into candle and ran the program. The machine went to work and effortlessly cut through the 3mm acrylic. The whole operation took about 10 minutes and the machine performed very well as you can see and the final part was very clean and there was no deburring or finishing required and when I checked the tolerance on all the dimensions they were all well within spec. I then decided to move on to aluminum. I imported an image into easel, laid it out on a 100 by 100 millimeter piece of aluminum. I set it to cut a total depth of 1 millimeter with a depth of 0.2 millimeters per pass. I then downloaded the g-code. For this cut I'm going to use a 332nd inch SPE carbide end mill, which I also highly recommend. Links to this end mill are below. I zeroed all the axes, imported the G-code into candle, and ran the program. The machine did a decent job of cutting the metal. While it was a little slow, and the machine at times seemed to struggle under the load, it did better than expected. In retrospect though, I should probably have gone with a shallower depth of cut, something closer to 0.1 millimeters per pass. The stepper motors had the power to get the job done, but you could tell that the spindle wasn't happy. The final result was actually pretty usable and again, very little deburring was needed. However, if you do plan to use the machine to mill aluminum, I recommend the DeWalt router upgrade. It'll make your cut much quicker and much less painful to watch. As I mentioned earlier, the link to that router upgrade is below. Now here are a few gripes or issues I have with the machine. The first, as you may have noticed, was that I was missing a dust baffle throughout the review. That's because the second dust baffle arrived bent right out of the box. Now this could have been caused by UPS's violent handling of the package, but it's really the manufacturer's job to ensure a machine of this size is packaged to take all the torture the box is put through. Saintsmart did quickly agree to ship out a replacement, but it never arrived in time for the review. Another thing I noticed right out of the box was that a few of the fasteners were already rusting. Again, it shows a lack of attention to detail and proper QC. Another QC issue was some loose wires that had come out of the terminal connectors. If you buy one of these machines, do make sure to double check the terminal connectors that plug into the control box before beginning to use the machine. All these issues, in my opinion, aren't really deal breakers, but are things that the company should really put more effort into. So should you get the Genmitsu 4030 Prover XL? Well, that all depends on what you plan to use it for. If you're a DIYer, designer, or engineer who plans to make the occasional CNC machine part and needs a machine that's more substantial than the entry-level 3018 machines, the 4030 is the best option out there. It's very affordable, it's sturdily built, comes with almost everything you need to get started, and produces very impressive cuts, despite its minor QC issues. However, if you're planning to use this for business purposes and are planning on running this machine every day to make hundreds or even thousands of parts, I would recommend looking elsewhere. This is still a budget machine, albeit a more expensive and better built one, but it's still a budget machine and cannot stand up to production duty cycles. For production applications, I recommend the Shapoko Pro Router. This machine is built for such duty cycles and has a range of accessories that'll make it much better suited for a production shop. The extra investment on the Shapoko will really pay off in the long run thanks to less machine downtime. I'll leave links to both machines below in case you're looking to buy one. Also, if you already own one of these machines, I'd love to hear about your experience with them, so leave me a comment below. Hope this video was useful. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe to stay tuned for more reviews, unboxings, and how-to videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.